I had a dream that I, I was late getting here and I didn't know what I was going to wear and I changed my clothes too many times. And so I, I ran here and I had high heels and I took my heels off and I was just running just as fast. I couldn't even believe I was running that fast. But I was a hero and I made it right on time with just running without high heels in high heel shoes. So it, it's, it probably sets the stage for what I want to talk about. This heroic running ability that I developed in my dream is something that maybe it would be a good idea if I could develop it in my wake state. It probably would help my physical fitness a lot. But in all of us, there is this, this ability in us that we dream of or we hide behind this mask that we don't let people know about the gifts and the super abilities that we have. But if we breed a, a new breed of leaders who are able to draw on the strengths that are their dreams or draw on the strengths that they hide behind, then we can apply many of these new capabilities to many of the problems that we have today in our society, in our economy, in the whole world, or being from NASA, I got to talk about the whole universe. And so why is this important? And looking at today's problems, we've got the crisis, the economy, ecology crisis that's going on with global warming, the, uh, the, the meltdown that's happened in Tokyo as a result of the horrific earthquake that happened. We've got the economy, the economic crisis that is global, and some of the challenges that are presented to leaders in terms of being able to solve those problems. And then finally, there's the political unrest. At any moment, an Armageddon, at any moment, the, the factions that are here, that are there, that are left, that are right, can come up and create just another unrest going on. Everything is fragile. So in thinking about what NASA does, NASA helps mankind answer the fundamental questions. Where did we come from? Where are we going? And are we alone? And we do that by observing our planet, by observing our solar system, and by observing the universe. Uh, pictured here, you see the Voyager satellites which launched in 1977, the Voyager spacecraft. Um, 1977, I graduated from high school. And still, the Voyager spacecraft, they're leaving the solar system. They're going to places unknown, and they're still transmitting data to this day back to us. Now, many of you who've seen Star Trek, the movie, the old one, know that in the future, then we'll see those Voyager satellites again, right? And get more information out of them. <laughs> so um, NASA has missions to look for planets. We didn't think that there was another planet anywhere near us. But there are lots of planets out there, and the Kepler mission is finding these planets all the time. Some of them are hostile. We don't know what they're like. But some of them look pretty hospitable to life just like ours. And then finally, as we look at the unknown in our neighbor, the red planet, and the very people who are going to walk on that planet, the little heroes, the little superheroes, right now they're in daycare, they're, they're using crayons, and they're learning how to ride bikes. Those people are going to be walking on the red planet and delivering information to us that we don't even know about. The little heroes that we're going to start to breed and generate is what this world needs. So what is that? Um, I'm the chief information officer of NASA. I got to say, it's a tough gig, right? And I was talking to a friend of mine and a colleague, and I said, so, hey, dude, how's it going? And he is also a chief information officer in another agency um, before he lost his job. And um, he said to me, hey, you know, it's hard. Um, I don't have enough budget, I don't have enough people, and I don't have enough time to do this. I'm like, hell, if you had that, anybody could do it. And that's what heroic leadership is about, being able to overcome obstacles to accomplish what needs to be accomplished. So let's talk about some larger-than-life kind of people. You've got Mother Teresa. Mother Teresa was strong. She was a little frail woman, but she was strong. 
and she wanted to address world hunger, not just feed this group, but the whole world, eradicate that. And that strength in this little woman was kind of like the strength in the fictional character Superman. He wanted to, to address the ills in the world. He was put on this planet to do something to help us. So then you've got justice. Uh, Martin Luther King and Batman. Batman's a fictional character, Martin Luther King, the real one. But justice was what drove them. Batman witnessed in the fictional story, the way it goes, his parents being brutally murdered in front of him. And that sense of justice and right and wrong um, stayed with him and formed the person behind the mask that he was. Martin Luther King lived with the injustice and wanted to make a difference and saw a vision for a different kind of life, a different kind of life for everybody. And finally, um, we have the passion that's associated with this heroic kind of leadership. Joan of Arc didn't really understand what she heard, but she knew that it fueled her to do whatever it she needed to do to save France. Um, the fictional character you see here is Hancock in the movie H Hancock, played by Will Smith. He lost his memory. He didn't know why he was doing things, but yet he still had this drive to continue to fight this thing called justice and to use his strength and his superpowers that he didn't even understand to accomplish what he thought might have been the right thing. So we talked about larger-than-life people and we talked about fictional characters. But what about regular folks like us, like me, like you? Well, first, let's talk a bit, little bit about why it relates to leadership. Leadership is about that human potential, that thing that you have, that gift that you were given, that, that dream of this ability that you'll get, and how you take that to accomplish something, to overcome obstacles, and reach that, reach that peak capacity inside of you and others. So let's talk about some superhero people in real life. Um, you've got um, twins, Bob and Mike Bryan. They could read minds. They could read minds. And that's what I say anyway. But um, they use their, that ability to become very, very um, unbeatable almost in terms of the tennis doubles world. One knew exactly where the ball, the guy, other one was going to hit the ball, and they were able to respond and turn that into wins. Here's some super women right here. They lifted a car off of a young boy. Um, something happened, a little boy got in trouble, and these superhuman women were able to go and lift it. They weren't weight lifters but they were just women who saw trouble, and they were able to go and lift this car off of this little boy. And then finally, we've got a soldier, a sergeant, who walked through fire seven times. His vehicle was attacked, and he, uh, he was thrown out of it. He was drenched with fuel. He went back in this burning vehicle, caught on fire, and seven times he went and took out his buddies. Um, one of the final times he went in there, his clothes were burned. They were just ashes. The only thing left was his helmet and his body armor. He eventually died, but he saved the lives of two of those people who were in the vehicle with him that day. He walked through fire. So how did these people do this? How does this happen? And there, there's not a lot of research about this because it happens to be unethical to put somebody in this kind of situation and say, <laughs> oh, okay, now, let's see if you can lift this car. Because part of what gives them this ability to do it has to do with fear and our body's response to fear, to stress, to whatever that is. And the courage of their spirit causes them to take this fear and the stuff that happens to your body in a physiological kind of way, use it to do things like lift the car or walk through fire or whatever the things that you have to do. Like my CIO buddy, maybe the fear that he had could have overcome the lack of budget, people, resources, and time in order to do what he needed to do. So along with the courage that's generated by fear, because if you didn't have fear, you wouldn't need courage, um, is the notion of integrity and truth. And a lot of times people say, well, what is that? Is it relative? No, it's absolute. It's absolute. 
And if you think about what that means, think about what lying means. Lying does some damage. Lying weakens you in a way. But when you use truth and integrity as a person and then as a leader, then you can accomplish some of these superhero kinds of things. And then finally, we've got to understand why we're doing this, our reason for existence. What drives us? What's the source of our passion? What is it? And it's a different thing for everybody. It's something for this person, for that person, for the other person. Um, one of the things that Viktor Frankl understood as he studied uh, people in the experience of being in a Nazi POW camp, that when people lost everything, their money, their identity, all their possessions, at the end of the day, the people who survived were the people who knew why they needed to exist, who knew the source of their strength and could draw on that and draw on that to survive. So when we think about some of these larger than life people and we think about the fictional characters and we think about ourselves, we hide behind this mask that we don't let anybody see. Just like in my dream last night, which was a dream, I dreamt that I was a runner. I dreamt that I could just sprint it right across the theater and I got right on my spot, right on time. Well dressed, I might add. But, <laughs> uh, but, but what if we're able to be the person behind the mask? The mask gives us the ability to be anonymous. If I'm anonymous, then I can be like Batman. I can go and I can do all these things. But what if I could behave like Batman without my mask? The everyday thing. And that mask gives you the ability to know who you really are and what your strength is, but let's bring it out. Let's bring that out. So, in conclusion, I want to talk about what that means in terms of going forward. You have the mask of the fireman who's always prepared, who always sits and waits for a moment's notice. And behind the mask of the fireman is a very brave and prepared person that will walk through fire in order to save lives. That's important. That's preparation. Or maybe this, the mask of the doctor, the physician, who studied for years to understand his or her craft, to understand what is needed to translate this idea about chemistry, biology, all that kind of stuff, but translate it to something that means something, to save lives, to do the things like Mother Teresa did, and launch that knowledge into energy in order to do something. And then finally, we have the mask of the astronaut, um, the young explorers now who are in daycare and been drawing pictures of rockets, who will one day be on a rocket and who will one day walk on our red planet, the neighbor. So inspiring the people, the little kids right now to do that, inspiring the leadership spark that's in them, and inspire means to breathe life in, to breathe the spirit of the new young superhero leaders who will walk on their planet. It's very important. It's important right now to our lives, our children's lives, and our ability as individuals. So think about that. Think about that as you leave. Think about looking in yourself. What are the skills and gifts that you have? What are your superhero abilities? What's behind the mask that you are behind. Think about that. And when you go out as mothers, as parents, as fathers, as daughters, as vice presidents, as chief information officers, think about that leadership and the new breed of leadership that's required for our planet right now. Thank you.